Hi, and welcome to my art studio. I was originally going to make this video a time lapse of the painting you see next to me here, which is actually the first painting I've made using acrylic paint in, God, at least whew, 10 years, maybe 15 years. But as you can see, my not so trusty easel had other plans. So yeah, even though this video started out more as food for the blooper reel than food for, you know, a time-lapse video, I finished the painting anyway. I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little rudimentary, but I plan to keep honing those skills and making more and more abstract paintings. And yes, I secured the nuts on this easel, so I will be able to do a time-lapse pretty soon of my next oil painting or acrylic painting and I'm also going to do more time lapses of the black and white drawings that I've shown you guys in previous videos. So if you're new to my channel, if you haven't seen those previous videos, I'll put the links to them in the video description below. A while ago, back when I was reading tarot cards, there was this particular deck that I loved that was called Path of the Soul Destiny Cards and this artist had made computer generated fractals but they were just so raw with emotion, raw with energy. It didn't look like a computer generated image. It was something she literally put her heart into. She created these. And they would bring me to tears sometimes when I'd look at those works. Staring into the night sky evokes that same emotion. And looking at the pieces colored in by some of the people who bought my first few coloring books also gave me that sensation. There was one girl in particular, Candace, I don't know if you even still watch my videos, but if you do, shout out to you. She took one of the pictures I had drawn as like a black and white image, and it was filled with circles that were kind of like frames within that image. And in each one, she did a different scene, landscapes and nightscapes, waterscapes. And she had transformed something that I had made just as an abstract, simplistic kind of a design used that as a frame for her own work and took it to another level. I think I stared at that picture that she shared with me on Facebook for at least 15 minutes just in awe of the way she had transformed something I did into something greater than I could have imagined. And when I mentioned in a previous video that I want to make another coloring book, this is exactly why. Now, as an art school, I can't say graduate, as an art school dropout, and as the niece of a lady very talented artist, my Auntie Mary Lynn, who studied art in university, who was a gifted art teacher. By nature, or I could say by my upbringing, I don't necessarily think of coloring books as fine art or as something high that we should strive to achieve in life. But what I do feel about coloring books is that for those who feel that urge to create but they don't know really where to get started, a coloring book can be a great jumping board or a great starting point to launch into your further artistic expression. A lot of people I went to school with used to look at me while I was doodling in class and they'd see these elaborate detailed designs that would span sheets and sheets and sheets in my binder and they would ask me, how do you even do that? And I can honestly say, it just happens. It's kind of like if you're a jazz musician and you hear somebody play a note, you can just jump into that song and play the next note and you kind of feel where the other is going with it. The same way with me when it comes to drawing, I can put a line on a piece of paper and just go with it and expand. So I want to show you guys the designs for my next coloring book. It's going to be filled with things like this. And it's not typically what you'd see in a coloring book, right? Because in a coloring book, usually there's enclosed shapes that you'd fill with one specific color. But here, a lot of the lines are left open. They're kind of spiraling outward. What do you do with those? That's the challenge that I feel a good coloring book will present to the artist who buys it. You have to figure out how to take that color. I've also made a lot of pieces where I myself have colored in my own black and white designs. So you can see here something similar, how I met that challenge, was by coloring fields of color around those lines. Instead of seeing the lines as a border or as a definitive shape to be filled in, there's no such thing as staying in the lines here. I've taken the lines as a guide, and in some places, 
the paint has filled those lines and in other places it goes out on its own and in other places it ignores the lines completely. When you feel inspired to get creative and you want to start doing some art of your own, I highly, highly recommend just get a blank piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or a paintbrush and just go for it. Go nuts. Put marks down. If you would rather take somebody else's jumping point and get into it like as in a coloring book or by say taking a drawing like this one that for all intents and purposes could be called unfinished because it doesn't fill the page, you can look at something like this and decide to put some circles emerging out of this line or you can draw some more curved lines around the others, you can add some more dots around the finished piece. You can just go wild with your imagination, either using what's put on the paper as a starting point or as a guideline or as something to color in, something to paint in, but I just highly, highly recommend get creative. For me, art is the most relaxing and the most energizing thing at the same time. I can lose myself for hours in a drawing and at the end of it feel like only 10 minutes have gone by. And at the same time, I feel revitalized after doing a piece of art. The painting here, I started it yesterday, finished it today. As soon as I finished it, it's like when you finish reading a good book, I suddenly thought, God, I need another blank canvas. I have to do more of this. And that's the same way I feel when I make jewelry. For each of us, when we find something that we enjoy, when we find some kind of a creative hobby, I really feel the more of our effort we put into it, the better we're going to be at our particular craft, and it's good to share it with others. So like I said, I want to make this video a bit of a show and tell. I want to show you the designs I've come up with for my next coloring book, which I'll finish when I finish all the pages in the sketch pad here. But in the meantime, you can check out my blog that I'll put a link to in this description, in the video description, for free downloadable PDFs. Somebody commented on one of my recent videos that she wishes she could see my art without first buying one of the books on Amazon, so I hear you with that. Similarly, I get curious but don't always want to pay for a book if I don't know what its contents are going to be, so yeah, I decided to just give you guys some free downloads. My only request is this, if you color in one of my pictures and you feel like you've done something really cool with it or not, or if you just want some feedback or want some kind of a critique send me a picture, either put it on Pinterest or put it on Instagram, tag me in it, put a link in the comments under this video. I want to see what you guys do because it's not just coloring a coloring book page, it's really collaborating, co-creating something. And yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on coloring books too. What do you think of them? as a jumping point for launching your own creativity. Do you think that they're trite? Do you think they're passe? Do you think they're lame? Or do you think that they're exciting? I personally think they're exciting. It's like one of my guilty pleasures whenever I'm in a bookshop. I'll stop in the art section, read through the fine arts books, but I'll also go to the craft and hobby section and see what's new in the coloring world. Anyhow, I showed you guys this design already. What I love about these really simple line drawings that only fill part of the page is that all the empty space, all the background is free for you to elaborate on. But I also do some rather busy full page designs like this one. And these are fun because they become so meditative. It's almost like coloring a mandala when you have so many tiny, tiny little spaces to fill. You have the choice whether to make it a repetitive pattern, whether to use all the colors in your coloring book, or sorry, in your box of crayons or felt pens or colored pencils or watercolor paints. You have the choice to limit it to one particular palette, like say in this painting here, I've limited it to blue, purple, green, and pink. But I mean, hey, I love color too, so it gives you a nice challenge design-wise and conceptually to figure out how you're going to use your colors. I've also done some pieces, like this one here, that look more like an object or like one image floating in the middle of the page. This one I'm actually going to make as two pages in the coloring book, one scanned just as it is like this, and then I'm going to fill all the blank space around it with more drawings and make that a second entry so you can kind of see my progress, how I take a starting image or the beginning drawing and then expand and fill the whole page. 
Here's another page that's kind of a lace work. It has some empty spaces that can be drawn into or filled differently. It also has a lot of activated spaces. One of the principles I learned in art school that I didn't know before art school is to activate the edges of the page. I think my teachers would be proud that I remember that key phrase. Activating the edges means that your picture spills off over the edges of the page but not necessarily everywhere. It doesn't have to fill the entire sheet. But by activating the edges or by pulling the drawing all the way to the border in some places, it gives it a more visually interesting appearance. This is one of my favorites because I like that spirally thing with these little lines that come jotting out from it. One of my other favorite YouTube channels is actually Peter Draws. And if you guys haven't seen his work, holy shoot, he does some really intense detailed drawings, he does some time-lapse work, and he also kind of vlogs as he draws. It's interesting to watch if you're ever bored or if you're looking for inspiration. And here's another fun little one. Here's one of my other favorites. I took a weekend and did this baby. And what I like about it is that there's a differentiation between the thicknesses of the lines. Some of them are really fat, some of them are colored in, some of them are left blank. It kind of gives the appearance of undulation. It's like that picture is moving. And I really can't wait to see how some of you guys color this one in. Another partial page that's going to be two pages, one left as it is, one fully filled. And that's it for now, for this particular coloring book. But like I said, I'll put a couple of free PDFs that you can download on my blog page, and those will be taken from my previous coloring books, Color Your Way to Creative Consciousness 1 and 2. So if you're up for it, if you'd like to take that art challenge, I extend this challenge to you. Color in one of those pages. Whoever colors in a complete, complete page that I'm putting up on my blog, like fully color it in and either put it on Instagram or Pinterest or Facebook, tag me in it and put the link in the video description here. I will send you a free preview page from my next coloring book, as well as a shout out in my next video. I'm gonna do like a show and tell by compiling all of these colored in pages. So I'll put that in my next video. And of all the people who do this, I'm going to draw names and send one of you a free piece of jewelry of your choice, either a bracelet, a pendant, or a pair of earrings. So let's make this fun. I love art, I wanna inspire you guys with some art get coloring, send me your images, and you'll get a shout out, you'll get a free sample from my next book, and you might just be the lucky winner of one of the pieces of jewelry. So as with all of my videos, I'm wearing jewelry from my own shop in this one, the Orbit earrings in rose quartz, the Ametrine, Amethyst, and Citrine necklace. I always wear some Citrine and some Ametrine when I'm getting creative because citrine activates the Manipuraka Chakra, or the city of jewels, the navel center, the solar plexus. That's the chakra that helps us get active on our ideas. Instead of just having fantasies or thoughts of what we'd like to do, when we awaken that particular energy center, we get the courage, the vitality, the stamina to follow through and actually put it into action. It's a really beautiful gemstone, but it also has that higher significance for me. Wearing a stack of bracelets on each arm, as always, but more on that in a future video. For now, I just hope this inspires you to get creative. And hey, even if it's not a page from my coloring book, make any kind of art, fill up that page, tag me in your post, and I'll send you those free sample pages. I think it's going to be fun. So let me know what you guys think. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Namaste. Bye, guys.